Welcome back in. There's a lot of uncertainty and questions this morning about the coronavirus, and we want to separate fact from fiction for you. Joining us this morning to answer some of our questions is Dr. Ted Bailey, the chief of GBMC's Infectious Diseases Division. Thanks for being with us so early. I know you've probably had five million questions thrown at you, and we have five million more for you this morning. You know, I asked you when you walked in, does this make you nervous when you hear this? Because a lot of people out there are anxious and, and it's very scary. So as a medical professional, does are you nervous? Well, we've been seeing this coming and we've been setting ourselves up at the hospital and preparing ourselves for what needs to be done preventatively. So I'm not because this isn't the first large scale respiratory outbreak. We deal with flu every year and the means of protection are the same and so this is something that we've drilled into ourselves. We have to take it seriously but we always have always had to take it seriously. Okay we've seen a lot of things floating on social media. One of the things that was spreading was if you drink a lot of water you can prevent this infection and to drink water every 15 minutes. Any any truth to that? I would say no. Okay. Uh, this is not something that we should rely on. We should drink plenty of water. Right. Um, but in, in thinking of that as a way to guard against corona is not reasonable. Okay. Uh, will the flu vaccine help prevent coronavirus? And speaking of vaccines, we heard today that uh, a vaccine trial could start in Seattle. Um, and how long could that take? So taking the first part of that question, could the flu vaccine... It can't protect against corona. There's too much difference between the two viruses. But I would say that to get through 2020 healthy and alive, you have to not just not die from corona. You can't die from flu either. So it is something that's still important to take uh, for your own health. The virus vaccine is something that there is a jump start on one that hasn't really been tried in animals. So the, the success of it will be very uncertain. Um, okay. And we won't know what the results will be. So it's something to follow, but not something to get our hopes up right away that this is going to be. I'm afraid that's right. Okay. Um, if you self quarantine, another question, are you fine after 14 days or do you need to be tested before going back out into the world? And I, I want to add on to this question. We had someone um, submit a question on Facebook that basically says if someone in your office gets it and you self quarantine, right, for 14 days, can you come back out and, and go back to life as normal or your new normal or do you need to be tested? Well, it's not a standard yet to test after a quarantine. Okay. If you haven't developed symptoms, that's considered highly reliable that you did not acquire it. But the level of reliability is something that we're still learning about because we do know some people never develop symptoms and some people may have the virus be able to shed it out beyond 14 days. Okay. Warmer weather, we're getting questions about this. Like the flu, we start to see the flu virus kind of taper off as the weather gets warmer. Do we think that this could follow that trend? We simply don't know. We know that the first SARS, SARS-1 from 2003, which was a related virus, did burn out in midsummer, but we don't know why, and it may simply have been because of good public health practice. People locked down hospitals, locked down apartment buildings, and did very severe public health measures, such as what we're seeing now, in fact, on a smaller scale. So it may have been that it went away, not because of the season, but because of the activity that was taken against it. We simply don't know what impact the season will have. We're getting a lot of questions about where do you draw the line on social distancing? So these kids are staying home. Can you have a play date with a family you're very close with? Can you visit your relatives? Can you have your grandparents over? Where do we draw that line? Well, you may see that the CDC has recommended less than 50. But of course, we've seen smaller groups close because it's not that there's no risk below 50. It's just that the risk is, is heightened. Uh, and that's, that's a continuum. You know, as you, as you gather groups together um, and you think about how much coronavirus there might be in the U.S. at this time, some of it without symptoms, uh, there's always some risk. And this has always been true of social gatherings during flu season. There's always been some risk that you might be around someone who's shedding a virus and that you could acquire it. So your risk goes up the more you are out and about. I would say this, if you are the one who has symptoms, it's certainly unethical to, to be out. That's something where you should keep yourself out of those kinds of gatherings. Um, we had a question come in on Facebook. My father is 71 years old, suffers from advanced Parkinson's disease, also a cancer survivor. Should we cancel his upcoming medical appointment to the hospital to reduce his chances of exposure? And I think going a step further for anyone who might be in that at risk um, group or have some health issues, can they still go to the doctor's office right now? Can they still go to the hospital if their doctor is located in there? So I just mentioned that there's a, a continuum of risk 
from larger gatherings to smaller gatherings. There's also a, a continuum of importance for the things that we might go out into the world to do. And at some point, those, those two lines cross. So it would depend on how important the visit is. And the way to gauge that, the way to calibrate that would be to talk to the doctor. Is this a kind of visit uh, that can be delayed? I will say that hospitals are delaying or pushing back elective surgeries. Those are surgeries that aren't urgent. Um, and we're also exploring telemedicine where we can do telephone calls and distance visits with patients when there isn't some value, some heightened value on actually coming in. So we are exploring and, and, and it's worth talking to that patient's physician about just how important is this visit and can it be served by phone. Okay. Um, can people or would you recommend, um, and we are starting to see some restaurants and bars shut down, but for the ones that are still open, is it okay to go to a restaurant to eat? Is it okay to um, travel right now on a plane? How restricted are we? So we'll take the restaurant itself. You know, we, we think about droplet transmission as the main way, but that also means not just droplets directly from a person to another person, but droplets onto an environment that can be picked up. Now, that can be cleaned. We know that the coronavirus is very susceptible to environmental cleaning. So restaurants may be something that you could consider. But again, once again, just as in flu seasons past, there's a risk. And we don't know fully how to gauge that risk of going out into public settings. I know they're wrapping me up. I have to get this one last question in because so many people want to know how long could it take for things to get better? And I know you can't answer that, but do doctors have any idea of how long you guys are looking at where things will start to sort of get back to normal for people? Well, because the incubation period is 14 days, roughly, and we know there's a few exceptions to that, we don't feel that we'll see the returns or the yields or be able to sense how much of an impact we've done with this, this new surge of, of approach with social distancing for at least two weeks and, and perhaps three weeks. And then we, we have to look at, at what impact it's had. Has it had enough of an impact? Okay. So you're saying for probably two to three weeks, we'll have some new information and then we can go from there. That's exactly right. We'll reassess this in a two to three week range because that's, that's as soon as we would really know if, if this has blunted uh, okay. the growth of the outbreak. All right, well, thank you so much. I know we have uh, so many questions for you and we just appreciate your time. Thank you for coming in early. Tomorrow, WMAR will be doing a coronavirus phone bank with a GBMC doctor. And be sure to tune in tonight for a 2020 coronavirus special. It's called Pandemic, What You Need to Know. That special is airing at 10 p.m. right here on WMAR.